The all-new Sunto 7 is a smartwatch that lies at the intersection of one for life and sports. This watch has all of the tools you need to stay on top of your busy lifestyle and all of the features you want for tracking sports, both indoors, outdoors, and off the grid. With downloadable maps, Google's Wear OS, and Sunto's signature software, this watch promises to be one of the best of 2020. But does it actually live up to these claims? In this video, I will dive in and evaluate this watch to show you everything you need to know about this advanced sports smartwatch. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Mike O'Brien, and this video is all about the Sunto 7, which is a very interesting watch, which kind of mixes a traditional smartwatch with Wear OS, with one of the more off-the-grid kind of watches that we typically see from Sunto or other competitors like Garmin. Now, this one right here could be one of the best fitness tracking smartwatches for everyday use, and we'll dive into that later on in this video, but I want to start off with just a physical tour to show you guys what we're really talking about and what we're working with here. So this is definitely a larger watch. This one is probably on the order of 47 or 48 millimeters. You have 24 millimeter silicone straps right there. You have a 1.4 inch screen, and this touchscreen display is vibrant and very bright, getting up to about a thousand nits. And it has, as you can see here, four buttons, which is really nice. None of these buttons actually rotate though, which is interesting. Here, they're thinking more about when you're you know, swimming in a lake, or if you're running a triathlon, or if you're going on a long trail run, a lot of times you just want quick buttons to see things and just kind of manage everything. So a lot of the workouts and a lot of the watch in general can obviously be controlled by touchscreen, but a lot, of the, a lot of the apps can actually be controlled as well using the buttons. You'll see that the button on the left is your home button, also opens the app drawer. If you tap and hold it, you get Google Assistant. The top right opens the Sunto app, which is uh, an app that you're only going to be getting on this watch. And I'll talk more about the Sunto app later on in the video, but it definitely is pretty much the, the bread and butter of this watch. It's really the reason you'd be buying this watch. Now on the right, we do have the middle button, which currently I have set to open and play music. And then the bottom I have for a timer right now. And that's essentially the buttons that we have there. This watch, if you look on the right side and the left side for that matter, you'll notice that it does not have a speaker anywhere, but it does have a little like tweeter thing inside. So it does give you some little beep notifications um, and it can make a few different tones. So if you're running, it'll give you tones when you hit like the one mile mark, the two mile mark. It'll let you know when it started a workout. Um, and if you start running and you have it ready, but you didn't start the workout, it'll notify you that you didn't actually start it yet. And on top of that, it also has some haptic feedback. So it will vibrate on your wrist. So between the two, I find that it communicates well enough for my needs, but you cannot make phone calls on this and you cannot have Google Assistant talking back to you because you don't have that speaker. This watch is definitely very, very durable. It's water resistant up to 50 meters. So it's really meant to be going out there and doing some very active stuff. It's a very rugged watch. As you can see here, the front screen is Gorilla Glass. I kind of do wish it was Sapphire, so it was a little bit more scratch resistant, but I haven't seen any issues with that yet. Maybe I'll get a screen protector, maybe not. Then we do also have some stainless steel framing around there. As you can see, we have the silicone straps, which as I mentioned earlier, are 24 millimeters. And then lastly, we do also have around the edge, you'll see it's a glass fiber reinforced polyamide. Like I mentioned, this is shock resistant, water resistant, and dirt proof. So definitely good in every situation that I've used it so far. So a quick aside, if you're new here and have not yet subscribed, please consider going down and clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. As far as the battery goes, it's pretty standard for Wear OS. And this is one of the compromises that we see between the real off the grid watches, which can last some of them like 10 or more days, and this one, which is really not lasting quite as long. So this watch is really meant for the kind of people that have a day job and maybe on the weekends they like to run and do some crazy stuff or after work they wanna do crazy stuff. So the battery easily lasts about one and a half to, they say two days. What I've been getting was on the order of about 31 hours before it goes into power saving mode and then about 51 hours before it actually dies. So just a quick tour for those of you who don't know much about Wear OS, you'll see that it's pretty straightforward. It's a really easy interface to use. On the front, you can tap and hold your watch face and you have several different watch faces that come with this one. And so I have the heat map right here, which you can set to show you a heat map of pretty much one of, I think, 15 different exercises I have running. So it shows you where people run in the area. You can also see this in the app and in the map on the watch. So it's definitely very nice if you're trying to find places to run near you. And if we swipe to the left, it gives you the my day thing, tells you like 
what the weather is and what time it is, some notifications about you know, Google, what they can do. If you swipe up from the bottom, that is your actual notifications. Swiping down from the top is your quick settings. And then swiping from the right side gives you some of the different little widgets that they have there, the tiles, the widgets, whatever you want to call them. And they do have some Sunto ones right here. So you have one that tells you about your week. They have another one that tells you an overview kind of of your month. And if you just tap the home button on the top left, it brings you into the app drawer and you can get lots of different apps from the Play Store, including like Spotify and Google Translate, uh, Contacts, you know, Find My Phone. There's a lot of apps on here. I've talked about this in the past. Now, of course, this also integrates with a lot of other apps like Strava um, and pretty much any other athletic app you're looking for from what I've seen, at least from the ones that I know. But one thing this watch does not do is actually connect to other third-party sensors or any external sensors. Now, looking at the back of the watch, you'll see that you do have right there your heart rate sensor with two heart rate LEDs right there. So pretty accurate from what I've seen. Right here, the charger, as you see, it comes in the box. It just snaps on there. It covers the heart rate sensor, which is nice. It's magnetically held on and it just lines up very easily with those four nodes. So next, I actually want to go into the Sunto app. I think that's something that is very important with this watch and it's a really big one. So when we open the app, you'll see that it tells you the battery in the top left. And if we swipe down, it brings us into the map, shows us where we are and we can use the buttons here or of course the touch screen to zoom in and out. And it does really a good job of this. You can also download maps offline. You do also have all of your workouts below that. So if you, if you start right there, it's going to start your most recent one, which is running for me. So if you tap on that and swipe it to the left, it'll start it. We'll show you that in a second. There's tons of, there's about 70 different workouts, probably more by the time you're watching this. And the, you can see there are definitely some pretty advanced ones. So they have the category of running and you'll see there's not just regular running, but there's like treadmill, there's interval, interval running, trail running. Uh, race running, like lots of different options. Regardless, whatever you're doing, you can record that in the app um, and on your watch here. And I'll show you the app in just one minute. But let's go up and check out uh, just one simple workout. Actually, let's go down and check out a fun one. So how about paragliding? If we go to start, you can hear it beeps right there. And then it shows you what the buttons do. So top right is pause. The middle button on the right is going to switch the screen. So you have several different displays it can show you. It can show you the map. It can show you just like your elevation. Um, and stuff like that. And then it can also show you a map of your elevation. So it does make sense. For paragliding, this makes a lot of sense. So the top right is going to pause and then we can go and stop it by hitting the bottom. So again, really nice. You can control all of the workouts just with the buttons on the watch. Then when you're done, it shows you, you know, quite a bit about it. Obviously, we didn't change altitude or go anywhere. Not paragliding. Okay, so now I want to go into the Sunto app and show you guys what it looks like. So as you can see here on the top, obviously this week I haven't worked out yet, it's the beginning of the week, but we have the sunrise and the sunset right there. So it tells you that, it tells you when you worked out last week, it tells you how many minutes you worked out. And as you go down, it just gives you some other things about some recent workouts you did. So I went for a run. Um, if you go down, you see a different one. And so if you go and check out any one of these, so we can see like my workouts, we go and tap on it and I can go in and check out this run right here. So you can see on a map exactly where you ran, right outside Philly at a park. And as you go down, they give you tons of analytics. They tell you essentially what they are. It tells you how long, like you can see all the analytics here as you swipe across, just tons and tons of information. You can share it with different people. So if you're working out with like a group or you're in a run club, maybe it'd be fun to share this with other people. You can see your heart rate and you can actually go into this, it turns sideways. And you can actually go through and see your heart rate at almost every single minute and you can see your pace, your speed, your altitude, your cadence, your vertical speed. And this is just for a run. It changes for every workout you do. You can go on the map right here and this will show you like where you are and you can see a heat map here. And this is, I think, really cool. So it shows you like in Philly, there's obviously like a lot of people running. But if you say, you know what, like I want to see this in a different view. I want to see this as like a satellite view with the heat map on it. And I want to see uh, maybe just regular running. So you, it shows you heat maps of where people run. And I've actually already used this to make different routes, which I think is really nice because you can see like more people, it's more likely that people run in good places to run. So you don't have to worry about like running through a bad part of a neighborhood or running through like running across a bridge that doesn't have a sidewalk. Like planning it out like this, I think was really nice. So if we want to start in like Logan Square, for example, or Logan Circle, we can go and create a route. And so it'll zoom in on like Logan Circle, we'll tap that, that's point A right there. And then you can start tapping where you want to go. So if we want to go here, 
it'll list point B right there. Then you can just say like, I don't care how I get back, just give me back to point A right there. So we tap on point A and it makes your route for you, it tells you the elevation, the distance, the like overall, how long it would, you would expect to take to run that. And then you can say done and you can actually save that route. So in conclusion, this watch is $500. And at first I was very skeptical. I said $500 for a Wear OS watch seemed pretty ridiculous. But once I started using it, I realized that this watch actually does a lot more than your average Wear OS watch when you're trying to do some advanced fitness tracking. So I think that it's very well thought out and you can tell that the people that designed it, specifically the Sunto app in here, really thought a lot about the user and really thought a lot about what they were doing when they were using the app. And I love to see when watch brands like Sunto or Fossil did the same thing, where they kind of modify Wear OS and add their own touch to it. So here, adding the Sunto app, I think was a great touch there, where this app, all the workout modes you're using are just perfect for what you're doing. So I found that swimming was great because the screen was not really a problem. I didn't have any accidental touches. I found that the buttons worked out perfectly. It showed me exactly what I wanted to see in every workout I did. I found that it was very accurate with what he was doing. And I found that the analytics were very easy to digest and were also very in depth when you're looking at them in the app. So overall guys, who is this watch for? That's, it's a very specific group of people. So this, would it be for your everyday watch user? Possibly, yes. If you're looking for a larger watch that is a pretty cool looking watch, then it definitely is pretty much as good as like the Fossil Gen 5 or the Scoggin Foster 3, except it doesn't have battery controls. So if you're okay with getting one and a half days per charge, it's a great watch for that. But I think more specifically, the group that this is really meant for is the people that go to work, you know, have a day job five days a week, 40 hours, whatever. And then after work, they want to go trail running with their dog or they want to go kayaking or they go mountaineering on the weekends. They go camping like people that do some very in-depth fitness stuff, um, just off the grid kind of things. This is a great watch to track your fitness really well, to really make sure you're getting in the best shape possible, to see where you ran, what you did, and just track everything and have a really smart, essentially a computer on your wrist. So I'm very impressed with this. I like doing all that stuff myself. I, I mean, I haven't gone paragliding admittedly, but I've done like a lot of these other workouts and I really like this watch. I think it's an excellent watch and I recommend it to that group of people I explained, um, but who this is not for, this is not for your everyday user that's looking to get a long battery life out of this. It's not really for people that have a smaller wrist because it is definitely a larger watch. I think it looks fine on my wrist. I have a, I guess a pretty average size wrist. But guys, that's what I have to say about this watch. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. As always, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.